Do you want to start a thriving real estate career, but don't know where and how to start? Do you want to become a successful realtor or investor, but lack the required knowledge and skills? Gear yourself up with the best and actionable advice here on The Real Estate Rundown. Tune in as Shannon Robnett talks with industry veterans about all kinds of asset classes, market trends, challenges, management techniques, and success stories. Listen to informative discussions with valuable tips that will serve as the foundation for your incredible real estate venture. Now, here's your host, Shannon Robnett. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to season two of the Real Estate Rundown. Today, I have the pleasure of having Lee Yoder on my podcast today, and I just want to welcome you to the show. Lee, welcome. Yeah, Shannon. Glad to be here. Thanks for having me. So, Lee, you've, you're involved in apartment syndication, and your particular market is Cincinnati, Ohio. Tell us a little bit about how you wound up doing this for a living. Why Cincinnati? And what, what you see is the value of, of how you got where you're from to where you're at. Okay, yeah, sure. Um, well, I'm a physical therapist uh, by trade. I, w- I went to school uh, for forever to become a physical therapist. Um, was, it was a good job. I was actually doing home health physical therapy uh, where I drive around to older people's homes and, and do therapy with them in their home. And um, it was a great job for the family but I was just bored out of my mind. Um, it, it just, it, it was not fulfilling or challenging for me. So the company I was with actually brought me in the office. I became, became the clinical director. It was actually a startup staffing company. Um, so I was really kind of rising, you know, climbing the corporate ladder, uh, moving toward a director of operations. But then I was on the other side, Shannon, where I was really enjoying my work, but now it was like not good for my family. Uh, and so it was kind of having some conversation with some coworkers that maybe felt the same way. And, you know, someone turned me on to the real estate a little bit. Uh, and I read, you know, the little purple book, uh, rich dad, poor dad and thought, okay, maybe cause it, I thought, man, are my two options, you know, do a boring job at, you know, home health, physical therapy, but be really good for the family or, you know, do a job that I really enjoy, but it's not good for the family. Um, and, and after reading rich dad, poor dad, I thought, you know, there's a different way to do this. You know, I, I could, um, I can kind of have both. That, that's what I was going for. And so I left the corporate job, took a pretty big pay cut, went back to home health, physical therapy, but I did real estate as a side hustle. And so I left at the end of 2016, toward the end of 2017, fall of 2017, I bought a house to flip, then did a duplex the next year, got into a couple small multis the next year, the whole time working full time. But as I kept getting a little bit bigger, and, and by the time I got into the small multis and I had 34 units we were really starting to cash flow and, and seeing the power of um, owning rental units. You know, what, what, whichever route you want to go, you can do well with, with single families too. It's harder to scale, but you know, you just start seeing the power of, okay, I've got a property management company managing these for me. You know, I, I did a lot to help turn them around. I kind of acted as the GC. I didn't have to do that, but I, but I wanted to, but by the time we were done with that, it's like, I, there's nothing more for me to do on these really. Cause somebody's managing them. Now I got to check in every once in a while, but they're just going to pump out income. And so that was the proof of concept that you read about in books like Rich Dad, Poor Dad and others, you know, more multifamily. And so at that point, Shannon, I just said, you know, I, I, and I love it too. Not everybody has to be in this actively and, and do it full time, but right. I loved it. So I really wanted to jump full time. I was able to do that at the end of 2020. And I just said, you know, I want to do more of this. And the reason I like syndication specifically is because you get to bring more and more people into it with you. On the small multis, I just brought one or two people on each deal and they made, you know, a lot of money right alongside me. And that was really fun. So with syndication, it's fun because I get to bring even more people in. So, um, yeah, it's kind of how I got into it and why I like it so much. So you started this in 2016? That's when I left my job. I didn't really get started until 2017, end of 2017. Okay. So, so you, but you read Rich Dad, Poor Dad in 15? Yep. Yep. Okay. Yep. So much. in in a period of a very short period of time, you were able to create the lifestyle. Yeah. Which is really what I think that I, I think that if you were to poll syndicators, I think the thing that they're after isn't really the love of real estate. It's right, really right. the love of the lifestyle, right? The, sure. the fact that just like you said, by the time you have done the do, you know, you, you buy it, you, you, you fix it, you put it over here with somebody that's taking good care of it. And you swing by once every month, once a quarter, depending on your relationship with them and how long you've been working with them and mm-hmm. check on it. But that provides you with the lifestyle that we're all looking for, because 
I don't know if you figured out something I haven't, Lee, but we only got one ride around this rock. Yeah. At the end of that time, our time's up. And uh, what we make of it isn't necessarily about what we build physically, but what we build in lives of people and lives of our family. And, and that only comes from the lifestyle that this affords you. Yeah. So when you're talking about syndication, break this down for my audience. I know that a lot of people are very, very familiar, but I like to make sure that everybody's aware of what the terms are. When you're talking about syndication, what does that mean? Well, really all it means, Shannon, is, you know, it, buying an eight unit, you know, we went out and bought an eight unit and I did that with a buddy of mine and, and, you know, here in the Midwest. And, and this was, you know, a couple of years ago, I thought things were hot back then, but it's nowhere close to what it is now. And so we just, you know, we both put in $30,000 and, and we could buy an eight unit. But when you go to buy, you know, even the first one we did a 45 unit, now we needed $550,000 to close. And me and my buddy didn't have 225 a piece, um, you know, or 270, sorry, 275 a piece to put into it to close that one. You know, 30 is one thing, 275 is another thing. So um, you need to bring on more people. And, and when you're bringing on more people and you're not going to be, you're, and all of the people in on the deal are not going to be active, that's technically a syndication. Uh, so you, it just means you have to file with the SEC, you know, do some paperwork and, and uh, those people have to fill that out and you, you kind of have to go that route. And it's just because we need to bring in more people because we're buying bigger deals. So we need to raise more money and all of those people aren't going to be active. Uh, you know, you don't want that. You don't want too many cooks in the kitchen. I mean, you could do it that way. 550 is still not that much. Now, you know, we're raising a couple million each time, but um, uh, yeah, that, that's what it is. You want to buy bigger property. So you need more money. So you need more people. So you do a syndication. Yeah. And so, you know, the other thing about syndication is you've got the general partner that does all the work, mm -hmm. right. And, mm -hmm. and signs for all the loans and yep. takes all of the risk yep. in yep. that regard that, that if things go South, it's not just about the loss of the initial capital. People will be showing up to get your cars and, you know, the things like that. I mean, the, the yep. side yep. that we never like to talk about, but that's what the general partner does. And the general partner uh, takes care of all the daily management, all the reporting, yep. all of the filing, gets the taxes done. This is the fun time of year. We got to make sure everybody got their K-1s, all those kinds of things, right? Yep. And then there's the, the limited liability side or the limited partners that don't have any risk other than their initial capital, right? Right. Yep. They could yep. lose that. I mean, that's a very real thing that people, I make sure that people understand, but it's mitigated, right? Yeah, because absolutely. we're professionals and because we know what we're doing. And so in that, we do all the work and we get a disproportional capital return. We put in some of the capital. I don't know how you do it. A lot of people put in 5%, some put in 10%, you know, some put in a little bit more, but you, you put in some capital, but you get a return on your efforts by gauged by how well your investors do, right? Yes. Yes. And so when you pull all that together, it really is a great marriage or great partnership for people like your former self, right? Yes, absolutely. Nothing but, nothing but money coming in and no time to do anything no with and wanting to get started on this, but not really, maybe they didn't hate their job, right? Maybe they all didn't, right, 100%. maybe it didn't yep. interfere with their family. Maybe they don't have a thirst for the freedom that you have. Right. And, and so they're able to participate with you and allow you to do what you've become a professional now at yeah, and, and help guide them through that. So when you were looking at that, it, it walk me through how you became the syndicator. You, you did the first deal with your buddy. Then you went, you, you know, the, you, you got the Charlie Sheen going on. Now you got a bigger itch. You got more to buy. What, how did that work? I mean, take me through that progress one more time. Yeah, really. You know, I, I just, I, I build up slowly, Shannon. I, I think, you know, when I tell people, like, if you really want to get in, if you want to be an active apartment syndicator and it, it is a job, yeah, you have to, it's my full-time job. And yeah, you, you laid it out perfectly, Shannon. Other people have different full-time jobs so they can just invest their capital. But if you want to do it full-time, I think you've got two options. I think you have to either start small and, 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 and learn the ropes and build it up yourself, or you got to go partner with somebody that's already doing it. Um, and, and, and then you can like, just jump right in, you know, some people will do the coaching programs and they'll find somebody and they'll team up, whatever. So I just started small, Shane, you know, I, I had it, you know, my first multifamily was a duplex. Now that's still a residential, but you know, I managed that myself. So learned a little bit about, you know, how that goes and manage it. And then I've got a 16 unit an eight unit and a 10 unit had a property management company managing those, but I was the asset manager and I was a GC. And so for a year, you know, just spent the whole year turning around those three properties and learning what it's like to be an asset manager and, and 
you know, making a lot of mistakes and learning from those and, and things like that. So then when it came to, you know, our first syndication was a 45 unit. It was really just buying, you know, a, a little bit bigger apartment building. We use the same property management company. Um, and, and so it, it's, it's really just like taking a step up and, and adding another zero, um, you know, and, and, and buying more units and having more investors and, you know, again, hiring some syndication attorneys to take care of that side of things. Um, but yeah, I, I think to really answer your question, it's just, it, it was the experience I had of owning three small multifamily properties and managing those and working with a property manager and getting the debt on those and um, all, all those things. Uh, yeah. That's that's really what just gave me the, the um, hands-on education to become an apartment syndicator. And, you know, it's funny because a lot of people think that you've got to go to the school to do it, or you've got to go to, you know, you got to take this mastermind, you got to do these things. And all those mm -hmm. things can be helpful. Yeah. But I think I find, I, I think I find more successful syndicator stories are a lot like yours, not to minimize your story, but they, they made their way down this path by bumping right. into the wall. Right. Yeah. And, and they made it there because they looked at it. And they said, well, gosh, this, this is the next step. And then this is the next step. And they kept going. And by the time they realized what they'd done, here they are, they've created a financial freedom for themselves like you have, that's created the time freedom that's really allowed you to disconnect your time spent with your funds earned, right? Yeah, 100%. Yeah. Well, now, Lee, when you started this, did you think it was hard? Um. When I very first, you know, we did a flip first and, 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 um, that was hard. Uh, and, and, um, yeah, you know, definitely parts of it seemed, seemed hard. Um, it just seemed like a big challenge. And again, Shannon, that's what I really liked about it. Um, I, I wanted the challenge. Um, and, and, and I do just say each step just felt like a, like a huge step. Um, and, and then, you know, jumping into it, I, I think, um, often it was maybe a little bit easier just because you have people helping you like the property management company doing a lot of things, but each step. Yeah. There, there were definitely some hard parts. Uh, and, and really it was a mindset thing, getting my mind around it, but, but there were some hard times for sure. And, and now that you've done it and you're looking back on it, same thought. Um, yeah, I, I don't know. I, um, it's, it's a really interesting question. There were again, hard times. Um, but I, I wouldn't change it. Um, right. that, that's for sure. Um, but, uh, yeah, I, I mean, difficult, but, but overall, I, I'll tell you this, it went much faster than I could have ever imagined. I mean, the way we built uh, that, that just went and, and the way, like, um, you know, we, we just built this momentum and the momentum just kept going. Um, I will say that happened a lot quicker and it, it was, I guess, just easier. And, and the amount of time was much less, uh, to, to get to where we are now. That that's for sure. Well, and, and I think that's kind of like, anything, the more you do it, the better you become at it, the more you are successful and get to the cash flow result, the more you believe right. that you can continue to do it. And the yep. more you, you know, I, I think the thing that I, I find a lot of people, you know, very similar story to yours, they didn't really set out to do it. You know, it wasn't like they, they, they decided, you know, at 18 years old, I'm leaving, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to college, I'm going to become a syndicator. Right. I mean, it's mm -hmm. like, you know, what are you going to be when you grow up? Uh, a what? You know, but I think that people find that it out of necessity, it becomes quite easy to do. And then there's there's the other side of the problem that you're solving for the people like yourself in your previous life that don't yep. have the time and the knowledge or belief. Right. So yes. when you're looking at what you've created and you're looking at how you got here, what would be some advice that you would give to someone that's just starting, that's, that's sitting there at the, at the same J-O-B that you had the choice of, keep the one you like that your family hates or keep the one your family likes that you hate <laughs> or go with what's behind door number three and read a little purple book and take a purple pill? Yep. Yeah. Uh, great, great question, Shannon. And um, I would say, you know, a couple of things. One, networking for sure. Um, I mean, educate yourself, but that'll only take you so far. The more you can network with people and get around people that are maybe, you know, it's great to be around some people that are just a step or two ahead of you. And then it's, it's good to be around some people that are 10 steps ahead of you. But really the people that are, you know, just a few steps ahead of you are really going to be able to show you, hey, you know, I'm here and you feel like I'm so far beyond you, but 
just a year ago or just two years ago, I was right where you were. And, and here's what I did. Um, and and I, I've heard other people say this, Shannon, but I, I like I like when people say, you know, think big, but start small. I mean, again, there's there's other ways to do it, but that, that's how I did. I, I did know that eventually I wanted to buy apartment buildings. I, I, I knew I wanted to own rentals, but I still started with a flip. And I wouldn't necessarily say you should start with a flip, but a duplex might be a good place to start. And the reason I say that is because the hardest part, like if you've done nothing, I think the hardest part is just getting started. So I would yeah. say it's almost like start with anything. You know, if you if you know somebody that's buying a, a, a fourplex, see what you, maybe you could get in on that. Hey, could I bring some money and could I do some work and could I get it? Just get started and get the ball rolling. The quicker you get the ball rolling, uh, you know, you're going to start building momentum. You're going to start learning. You can't learn most of what you need to learn until you start doing it. You know, the books yeah. and the podcast can only teach you so much. So I, I would, I would try to get started as soon as possible. And you can start small. Um, you, you'll, you'll surprise yourself if you just get started, even if you start small, you'll surprise yourself at how quickly you can scale and, and get to where you want to get to uh, versus saying, I only want to own a hundred part, hundred unit plus apartment buildings. So I'm waiting for, you know, I'm only doing that. Right. Good luck, especially yeah. in today's market. So I, yeah. I would just get started, but get around some people that are just a couple steps ahead of you. It's really going to help you. Well, and, and I think that you, you know, you bring up a valid point. I mean, everybody, I mean, your journey is not unusual, it was right. for you, right? You went, came from the classic college background. You did the thing you were supposed to do, you know, but, but it's not an unusual story in our world that you right. started out with a gateway drug of a duplex, <laughs> yep. you know? Yeah. And the next thing you know, you're, you're, you're doing larger deals and, and you're seeing how valuable that skill set can be. And, you know, this is one of the things, Lee, that I learned, you know, I, I've been in, in real estate development for 35, 37 years, right? Nobody ever wanted to help you in, yeah. in this. You know, it, nobody wanted to help you as a general contractor. Nobody wanted to show you how to build more efficiently or to negotiate better contracts because they weren't working with you. They weren't, yeah. they weren't in a position. And one of the things that I've really seen that you hit on in multifamily in this world of syndication is everybody seems to want to help everybody else. And it feels a little weird at first, you know, like yeah. you're, you're going, uh, did, did I just, you know, why is everybody so helpful? But the reality is we're not necessarily competition. In fact, if we can bring good underwriting, good skill sets, good mentoring to the marketplace, we're going to have a better rental pool. We're going to have a better rental market manager. We're going to have better product. We're going to have better sales techniques. We're all going to level up and yep. the market itself levels up, right? Yeah. Yep. And it's one of those things that I think that because we come from a background of wanting more, I don't think that most syndicators have that scarcity mentality that says, this is mine and I can't share it with you because then you'll have my advantage and I, I can't let you have my advantage. Yeah, absolutely. And, and I think because, again, especially the bigger you get, Shannon, you know, the, the pie is just so much bigger. It's okay to split it up. Like there's enough pie to split it up and, and you're actually, you know, just going to be better off. I mean, when I talk to people, yeah, I'm always thinking like this guy or girl might go find a deal and not be able to take it down. So they'll come to me, you know? And so yeah. I, I am trying to help them, but it's like this, this could end up benefiting me. We could just partner on it because again, yeah. it's going to be big enough. If someone brought me a duplex, dude, there's not enough cash flow there for me to even, you know, put in the work necessary now. Right. Not, not, again, right. I still think people should start there, no, but you now- but when you go bigger, I mean, it's a big enough pile to pie to split up three, four, five different ways if you have to. Well, and it's just like learning to ride a bike or drive a car, right? I mean, you don't really want to start out in a NASCAR trying to learn to drive, right? <laughs> yeah. I mean, no, you've got to, I mean, a duplex is a great place to start, right? Or partner yep. with somebody or be part of a team or bring your talent that says, hey, I can do this or this, right? Yep. But it, it allows you to grow in how you come out of this. And, you know, that, I mean, you're so correct. I mean, you know, being, I heard this said the other day, being of value to valuable people is the easiest way to get valuable information, right? Yeah. yeah. Because yeah, if you're sitting there going, hey, can I, I mean, and, and I think this is a lost art, right? We, I mean, 300 years ago, everybody had the apprentice, right? You went yep, through yep. that apprenticeship program where yep, you were the blacksmith's apprentice. And then when he finally killed over from a heart attack, you became the blacksmith, right? I mean, yep, that yep. was just the natural progression. You had to wait for somebody to die to advance. But here we are 
in this world where now we could be a value to valuable people or be a value to people that we see value in what they're doing. And then they can help us level up. Just like you said, Hey, I got a deal and no way to cut this up. I can't figure this out. I've never eaten an elephant before. Oh, come over here to Lee's Lee's house. Lee makes elephants do all the time. Right. (laughs) Absolutely. Yeah. So, so when you're looking at, at how you, you, you get started. I mean, I, those, those are some really great nuggets there on how to get started. But what are some of the things that you found once you got started and you've gotten down this road five, six years? What are the, some of the things that have really changed in your world? Uh, you mean just like my, my lifestyle, things like yeah. that? Yeah. I mean, your, your mentality, your thinking, your lifestyle. Yep. I mean, all of that is wrapped up in that. Uh, all of that was why you started the journey. What's, oh, what's yeah. been the result along the way? Yeah, I'll tell you, Shannon. I mean, I, I was uh, talking to somebody and, and my wife and I were talking about it the other day. And, and I said, you know, we're not where we want to be as far as reaching our real estate goals. And, and I'll probably never will be because I'm just, you know, always wanting to build and always, always wanting the next challenge. But as far as my schedule, I'm pretty much there. Um, I mean, I, I love the schedule I have. My, my wife actually stays home as well. Uh, our kids do a hybrid homeschool program. So, you know, I'm able to get up. Uh, if I need to get some work done in the morning, you know, I'll do that pretty early. Uh, and then, but then I jump in, I have breakfast with my kids every single morning. Uh, I help out with homeschool three mornings a week. The other two, they're, they're in school uh, the full day. Uh, and then I jump into work, you know, I eat lunch with my wife sometimes. Um, sometimes I'm, I'm taking, you know, uh, potential investors or other multifamily investors out to, out to lunch. Um, I eat dinner with the family every night. Uh, and, and then, um, you know, I, I might do a little bit uh, in the evening, but then, you know, for me, I don't, I I get a lot from work. So I I usually work a little bit on Saturday, but it's just, it's whenever it makes sense. It's when, you know, kids aren't napping anymore, but before it was, you know, when they were taking a nap and and Sunday, same thing that everybody's doing something. And even Sunday morning, before everybody else gets up, I might be doing work before we head off to church and things like that. So I'm, I'm working a lot. It's when it makes sense for the family. I wouldn't have any other way because I'm really bored when I don't work. I mean, that's, Another thing I like is even when we go on vacation, I, I mean, I get to do some work because I, I just get bored if I spend too many days yeah. without doing anything stimulating and challenging. So I love that I get to work hard, um, but kind of when I want. I mean, um, you know, I don't have really anybody telling me what I have to do. And, and sometimes that's a challenge, but I, I wouldn't have it any other way. Um, so I love the schedule. I, I love how challenging it is, how stimulating it is. I like working with other people. Again, we, we use third-party property management. You know, we've got our lenders, we got all our investors. I've got a partner uh, that I work with. So, um, yeah, it, it, it's fun, exciting, challenging work. Um, but it it fits around my lifestyle, the, the life yeah. that my wife and I believe God have called us to in our family. Work fits in around that. Um, so, it's you it's know, and, and and to your whole boredom thing, I, I heard uh, John Maxwell uh, this last weekend uh, say that, you know, people talk about working until they're done. And then what do you do after that? You know, yeah. he, he, he said, I will work till I'm done, but that will likely be when I leave this planet. Right. Yep. And, and not that you, I mean, it, 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 and it's funny because people that don't understand, they understand the job just over broke, right. Somebody else <laughs> controlling their time, telling them when to be there, telling them that uh, this Saturday, we got to work on this project. We got to do this to having that freedom that you can create the cash flow, You can create the lifestyle that why would you ever quit? You know, right. why, why yeah. would you ever stop doing this, having lunch with your wife and kids? And I mean, I think at some point your kids won't want you to take them to college classes and participate, you know, but I, I mean, right. I right. think yeah. up yeah. until yeah. that yeah. point, you know, dad, come on, you know, oh, for sure. yeah. <laughs> homeschooling <laughs> college would be a little bit, a bit of a trick, you know, but, uh, but, you know, I, I just see how people that get into this lifestyle find the passion because it allows them everything that they ever wanted out of life. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And that's, and that, really- that's a, Exactly. And another, another cool thing about that I like about syndication, Shannon is again, with the partnering thing, it does allow you to specialize a little bit in what you want to do. So mm-hmm. when I had the small stuff, I did everything, you know, even though I, I had some partners, um, they, they were really just money partners. I was doing everything. So wearing all the hats, whereas now today I brought on a partner and I said, Hey, I just want to go out and be the front end of the business. Can right. you handle the back end? So he's the one that talks to the property management company, you know, every week and, and sometimes seems like every day and, and kind of managing the properties we already have. 
I get to go out and hunt for the new properties and hunt for new investors every day. And that's what I enjoy doing. So again, it just, yeah, why would I stop doing that? Because this is the kind of stuff I, I really enjoy doing. So, yeah. yeah. Well, and that's where, and, and that's, you know, again, you didn't start out headed down this journey. And so, you know, you didn't think you were wearing hats. You thought you were just doing a flip and then you're doing a duplex. And yeah. now all of a sudden you, you know, it gets to the point where, I mean, I have, you know, five people in my business that do other parts of the business that I, well, they, they tell me that they don't like it when I do that part of the business, right? <laughs> That's a good thing. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> it's not that I don't enjoy it. It's that they don't enjoy picking up after me when I only get it halfway done or don't do it right. Or, yep. you know, uh, and like you, I, I enjoy being out in front. I like talking with new investors. I like talking with new people, paperwork, not so much. Mm -hmm. Seeing a deal, underwriting a deal. I like that part. Am I, am I really good at getting the 12 cents in there? Not really. Mm -hmm. That's why I got Cody, you know, and we, yep. we par partner on that stuff and we, we work through that. And it's awesome to see that your journey started out as a solopreneur. Now you're an entrepreneur and now you're bringing other people in. What do you think is the biggest benefit that your business creates for your investors? Yeah, I, I think just, just allowing them. My goal, Shannon, I think what we've been able to do, you know, you're right. Not, not everybody's going to jump into real estate full time and some people enjoy their job. But um, usually people, um, even if they're in a better situation than, than maybe just over broke, as you explained, they, you're still, a lot of people are going to get in a situation where they, they would like to make a little bit more money. Maybe they want to take an extra vacation. Maybe they want the kid, their kids to go to a private school. And they just, you know, we can't quite afford that most people, right? Like they think the, the only way to do that is to trade more time for, for more money. So I've got to work for this promotion. Well, the promotion means more responsibility, maybe more travel, you know, just more stress, but they think, but that's the only way for me to be able to spend, send my kids to private school. Well, what we're able to say to our investors is if you can save up some money and put some money into real estate, not only does it create a nest egg for you, because we are building long-term wealth as we pay down the debt and create equity and things like that. We're going to pay you now. You're going to get a right. quarterly check, a quarterly distribution that's going to pay you today. And so if you can put some money to work for you, maybe you can, you can make enough extra where you can send your kids to private school without spending more time away from your kids. And that's kind of what our, our dream and our hope for our investors is. And what we have been able to do for some of them is give them extra cash today to, to improve their life, to improve their financial situation for the family without the traditional way to do it is just, I got to trade more time for money, which yep. great. Send your kids to private school now, but you got to spend even more time away from them. You got to be right. even more stressed out, more, right. you know, maybe short tempered when you're home. So our goal is to be able to, you know, kind of give people that, uh, that extra financial um, cushion that they need or, or, or uh, you know, kind of some options in their life without yeah. trading more time. You know, and that's, and that's true. I mean, you know, when you, and the other thing that, that I look at too, and I'm, I'm starting to teach this to my adult children is that if you want something, get the investment that pays for that something, right? Sure. It's yep. not necessarily about, I mean, if you trade the time for money, you, you go work those more hours and then you buy the private schooling when it's done, it's done. Yep. Not yep. that that's not a great investment, but what if you traded that time for the investment that bought a duplex that put off enough money that you could send the kids to private school on a monthly basis. Then when the kids are done, you've got enough equity in the house to send them on to college. Yeah, you still right. have the asset, right? Yep. And so, what people forget is that that there's cash flow, and there's more than just thank you for the appreciation that you get, right? I mean, there's real yeah. appreciation where it continues to grow, <laughs> and it's such a beautiful thing, right? Yeah. Uh, I mean, we yep. all we all focus, and I and I find that most investors focus one of two ways: they either focus on cash flow, right, or they focus on appreciation, one of two. But we often forget if my focus is appreciation, I forget that there will be cash flow. Yeah. But if my focus is cash flow, I forget that there will be appreciation, right? Yep. So, you know, one of the things that, that we all look at is, is how we're able to trade the time value here and get those things done. But what have you found, you know, and, and it's that time of year where we're all starting to think about taxes. What are some of the tax benefits that you find that you're getting out of your real estate properties? Yeah. Um, you know, one thing is, some of that appreciation when we have sold, we're paying uh, long-term capital gains tax instead of tax as tax as ordinary income. So uh, we've definitely experienced that where we're paying much less taxes. 
Um, we did do a cost segregation study on this 96 unit that we just bought uh, in December. Uh, so all of our um, passive investors uh, are going to get enough depreciation where on this particular property, if they only use it against uh, the cash flow on this property, they for the next three, four, maybe even five years, they will not pay any tax on the cash flow that they get. So not only are we providing you again, you know, some good cash flow, you're you're not going to pay any taxes on it. Uh, right. So that's really cool. Uh, on the GP side, it, the, the benefits are are incredible. Um, you know, we're we're going to get enough depreciation where um, you know I won't pay any taxes for for everything I made last year because uh, yeah. we got so much depreciation. So. That's Which better. We know, to be what able- you're gonna, we know what you're going to do with the money. You're going to go buy more real estate, aren't you? Absolutely. Yeah. 100%. <laughs> yeah. No, absolutely. You know, and people often call it cheating on taxes, but the reality is this is doing exactly what the IRS wanted you to do, mm-hmm. right? What the government wanted you to do. Because right now in America, we're 9 million housing units short, right? Yeah. We've always, throughout history, have been short housing units. It's the financing that's always been the problem. Right. Yeah. And so as funding has ebbed and flowed, that's what caused 2009, 2010. We had the market crash. That was because people had funny loans. Right. Then we go through this period where nobody can get a loan. It doesn't matter how good your credit is or if you gave one up. And so we went through these two different segments, but it had nothing to do with need. Out of that, we didn't build any houses. So now we're in a super dire need for housing. Mm -hmm. And now you're going to reinvest in more housing. You're going to take your your tax benefits for the rich. You're going to take your money and you're going to reinvest in more income producing assets that's going to give you more of a tax problem. So you're going through this continual circle. But what you're continuing to do is improve your communities. Right. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And and I think, Shannon, if you read a book like Rich Dad, Poor Dad, um, you know, when I read that, I thought, you know what? You've got two choices. You can be mad about that. You know what you just explained. Or you can join it. I mean, that, that's kind of what yeah. Robert Kiyosaki says. Yeah. Guys, yes, the tax code was written by rich guys. Okay, so you can be mad about it or go do it. They're, they're telling you the tax code is telling you what to do. Right. So be mad that other people are doing it or go do it. Well, the other mm-hmm. side of it is, you know, I look at it like it's a tax code, but people look at that as a penal code and it's not, right? It's right. an instruction book, right? If yep. you do this, you will reap yep. this benefit. If you don't sure. do this, you will not get the benefit, right? Right. So if you just flip it over and I get it, you know, but uh, so, so there's so many other benefits. I mean, you've got time freedom, you've got tax benefits. um, You've got, you know, work that you did five years ago is still paying you today. Uh, You know, you've got the appreciation more than a thank you, but you know, then, then, then there's the things that you're doing with your investors that are helping them do the things that they aren't able to do or not wanting to do, you know, not everybody loves the idea of, Spending their Saturday driving around drooling, looking at property, right? Yeah. I mean, some sure. people call that a stalker. I, I don't. I think that that's no, just, good. you know, okay. that's yeah. driving for dollars. Just so you know, Lee, that's not a stalker. You know, <laughs> uh, you can't stalk real estate. It's an inanimate, it's an inanimate object. Yeah, right? I agree. I agree. But uh, so, uh, you know, now, are you primarily in one market? Are you branching out all over? What are you doing with your growth plans? Yeah. So for right now, Shannon, we've been an all in one market. And, and I mentioned uh, Cincinnati, Ohio, because no, more people know that market, but I actually live between Cincinnati and Dayton, Ohio. And everything we bought so far is really actually in the Dayton market. Um, and, and our property management company is pretty big for the Dayton market, but that's the only market they're in. So we've got a good team here. So it's, it's much easier. Um, and I'm much more confident in just continuing to add in the Dayton market. So we'll keep picking up, you know, 40, 50, 60, 80 unit stuff. In, in, in Dayton, but we are very um, interested in moving to other markets. And, and the more I'm in this space, I do a podcast as well. I've been in a mastermind. And so I, I've connected with a lot of people that are in other markets. So um, I would love to, to buy, you know, um, somewhat close to me, but like in a Lexington, Louisville, Kentucky, um, Indianapolis, uh, Indiana, I, I would love to buy in one of those markets. If I did that, it would be a bigger property. It would have to be hundred units plus. I wouldn't want to own something small in another market. I want to own somewhere where a bigger, bigger regional property management company could control that and have somebody on site and things like that. Um, but yeah, I think that's probably, I think this year, our, our main focus would be just continuing to grow our portfolio where we're really, where we've really got a good team, which is Dayton, Ohio. But um, along this year, we're definitely going to be looking for our opportunity to, to um, expand into another market that, that's, you know, within two, three, four hours of us. You know, and it's, it's so, uh, it's great to hear you say that because everybody thinks that, you know, you want one, you know, you want to diversify. So you got one in California and then you got one in Kentucky and then you're up in Iowa and then you're down in Florida. And, you know, to, 
to, to concentrate your efforts is really key because then you can yeah, perfect your craft. Now, when you take it four hours down the road, you already know what you're doing, right? You, yeah. I mean, you, you've yeah, got yeah. it figured out. You're, 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 you're just moving it down the road. You've got some other options, but it's not that you're stretching and straining your network and you know what you're looking for when you go into it. Every market's a little bit different. They're all still fairly the same, but they are a little bit different. And knowing those nuances, it's easier to pick up on that than trying to learn how to do it with, you know, one in Dayton and, and you know, one in Dayton, Florida and one in Dayton, Ohio. You know, I mean, yeah. yep. two, same name, very different results. So, but, <laughs> um, but when you look at that and you look at your growth pattern and you look back at what you put into this, what do you think has been the, some of the, some of the lessons that you've learned that that have made you a better entrepreneur, a better yeah. not not just not just in real estate, but just all around entrepreneurship through yep. this journey. Yeah, I love that question, Shannon, because um, for me specifically, there, there's been a lot of growth there, and you know, often uh, God puts us with somebody who's very different than us, and and that's my wife and I, especially. We didn't know that until I started becoming an entrepreneur and started getting into real estate, and I remember her saying, "I didn't know you were like this." when I married you and I said, I didn't either. You know, I had no idea. I, as long I as, know. as long as they don't put that other sentence in there, I didn't know you were like this or I wouldn't have done it. Right. <laughs> <laughs> well, she might've, yeah, she might've just, with, she might've been thinking that, but she, yeah. Yeah, she didn't say that part. Um, but you know, so we, we've learned a lot about each other. And so she's very risk adverse. You know, I'm, I'm a gambler. Like I want my right. chips on the table. I want to play. You know, I, I try to tell her I'm a football guy and I, I, I'm telling her all the time, we didn't lose. Stop acting like we lost. We only threw an interception. The game is still going on. Let's, you know, quit acting yeah. like we've already lost. And, yeah. and she's like, no, I, yeah. I feel like we've already lost. We, we've yeah. lost. Yeah. Team's folding. It's over. You know, we're going home. And I'm like, we, we just it's the first quarter. Exactly. The first quarter. Right. Yeah. No. And, and, and my wife, now that you bring it up, uh, my wife and I are very similar in that, you know, once you've won that, you can't ever risk that. You can't ever lose that. You can't, you know, and, and there's, I mean, look, uh, you know, there's a lot of things in this business that have some bit of uncertainty to it. Sure. You yes. can do a lot to take that out, but there's always things that go south, right? Yep. There's always I mean, you bought a property and, 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 you know, property disclosure said one thing and you found out another or, you know, but like, you know, like I said, I was with John Maxwell this last weekend. And, and one of the things that he said is that that's fine. It's not a failure till you keep doing it. You know, <laughs> yeah. Yep. A, a mistake is one thing. And, and that's something that you learn from and you create a different system and, and you don't do that again. You know, yes. Uh, I, I remember the time that I lost a $50,000 earnest money it was my personal money. My wife wasn't keeps excited. Re keep, keeps reminding me, you know, uh, <laughs> And no, she's, she's not excited. Absolutely not excited. But we've changed what we did. And while that was a $50,000 masterclass, it's not something we'll ever do again, right? Yep. And it's yep. not something we'll ever put ourselves in a position to ever risk our investors' money to do that. But if could I have learned that lesson without that mastermind class? Maybe not. Yeah. I would have right. liked to think that I could, but there's so many things I told my dad, I would never do that that I did. Yeah. Right? So, oh, so I, 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 I don't know. I have a very similar, you know, I totally agree with you. There's a lot you just have to learn by doing. I remember when, when we hadn't started yet, we were getting the, the flip and my wife said, Lee, are you sure you know everything you need to know to do this? And I said, Hannah, I know everything I can possibly know from reading a book. Everything else I'm going to learn, it can only come from doing it. Are so, you sure physical therapy was your first? That sounded pretty lawyer-esque. I know everything okay. I need to know from yeah. reading a book. Like I'm disclosing absolutely I, from the book. <laughs> yep, yep. But no, what, what's been cool, Shannon, is though, it, it's really been a, a great thing. I, I got, God put us together for a reason and, and she slows me down a lot. But what that's done for me, again, because I'm like, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. We flipped one house and it took us one flip to learn that flipping is not investing. Flipping is just another job. And it's really because she forced me to slow down. She said, Lee, that was terrible. Cause I was doing a full-time job, did a flip on top of it. It was like, I was back at that corporate job that I just ran away from. Cause right. I said, this isn't good for the family. And now we're like back in it. And she's like, I thought like, you told me real estate investing is like money comes in and it's passive. And you know, and here we are, you know, doing a flip. And 
And I was ready to do another one. Let's do another one. Let's get this going. Let's get this going. We'll get better. And she's like, nope, we're not doing that. Let's stop. Let's rethink this. And by the time I took some time to think about it, I said, you're right. That's not what we want to do. So we jumped into a duplex and then kind of the same thing. Hey, this duplex much better than the flip. This is investing. You know, we had some renters in there. We only, we didn't even own it for a year, but we saw our income is more than our expenses. And it's going to be that way for as long as we own it could be forever. So this is totally different. But I said, you know, she, again, wait, like, is this really what we want to do? Kind of slow down. And I said, how many duplexes are it going to take us to get to where we want to go? 20. I don't want to own 20 duplexes. So let's go to the next. So the whole time, Shannon, I've really felt like we're not moving fast enough because my wife is, you know, frequently kind of, nope, slow down, slow down, slow down. But we went single family duplex 16 unit, you know, one year after another. And so we only bought one property a year, but we went from a single family to a 16 unit. And so that's, you know, compared to a lot of people, that's really moving at lightning speed. And, and for me, I felt like it was lightning speed when I look back because we slowed down. And, and so one thing I like to, I, I have to keep telling myself this, it's it, the goal is to not be efficient. The goal is to be effective. And so you can be wow. efficient and flip, you know, 25 houses a year. And maybe you'd have a good outcome. But if I, I could have been efficient and flipped six houses in those first three years, but I would own nothing. And I wouldn't have been anywhere closer to my goal. I would have just made more money. And I probably would have made the money back that I took in a pay cut going from my corporate job back to home health physical therapy, which is exactly what my flip did for me. Great. So sometimes, you know, it's, you got to slow down. You got to work on the business, not in the business, be effective. What, what do you, what should be the next thing you're doing? And my wife really helped me do that um, because we're different. So that's been kind of cool for me to learn that in the entrepreneurial journey. And we're actually going to play this for all the wives on Valentine's day. So that, you know, <laughs> <laughs> now, but you know, and, and that's so true. And that, and that is, you know, I, I know a guy that, that does passive investing out of his flipping business, right? Oh, I mean, yeah, he is, perfect. You know, yep. but, but he loves the flipping part. Right. And, and you're right. I mean, I, I, did one remodel, right? I actually moved the house and put it back on a basement and did a remodel. And it was one of the most horrible experiences of my life, right? Uh, and so I know what I don't like because I've done it to figure out that I don't like it, right? Um, and there's some people that are smarter than you and I, Lee, that can look at it and decide that they don't like it before they go and do a flip or do a remodel or do these kinds of things. Yep. But it's it's really great that you've got that partnership with your spouse, that you can do that kind of a thing where you can come through it and go, this is what we liked about yep, yep. it. This yep, is yep. what we didn't. And here's our goal. And this is what we're going to do. And this is the thing that I love that, that a lot of people forget because they're so programmed for a J-O-B is you can come out of the deal, retriangulate toward your goal and go, okay, we did it. That didn't quite get us where we want to go. We're going to shift over here and we're going to go this direction to get us there. And you're really adjusting as you go to get to that finer point that by the time you get to the place where you're like, bang, 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 people are like, man, how do you get there? I got a bunch of stuff back here. You got to see, yeah. you know? Oh yeah. yeah uh, it's the trail. Yep. And and, you know, funky lots that you're building on or, or, or duplexes that you're trying to turn into a quad or all these little things that people go through that you're just sitting there going, whoa. But that's the growth pattern, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, you got to so, go through it. Yeah. So you mentioned, Lee, you got a podcast. Tell us about your podcast and where we can find you in the world, because after this conversation, I know my audience is going to want to definitely check out where you're at. Yeah, sure. I appreciate that, Shane. Um, Threefold Real Estate Investing is the name of our company. And that's the name of my podcast, Threefold Real Estate Investing Podcast, uh, where we talk multifamily, very similar to yours. I uh, talk a lot about faith and family as well. Uh, you can find me through my name, Lee Yoder, on uh, Facebook or, or LinkedIn. And then jump on our website, Threefold, that's spelled out T-H-R-E-E-F-O-L-D-R-E-I, as in realestateinvesting.com. We've got a free ebook there and some other stuff. So jump on, jump on our website for sure. And if you ran through that a little fast, look over his shoulder. You can see Threefold there on the wall. You can get that nailed down. That's and it's there. big enough for those of us that uh, didn't wear their glasses. Let's see. Yep, we got it. <laughs> but guys, I want to thank you uh, for showing up and listening to another episode of, of the Real Estate Rundown. Lee, I want to thank you for coming uh, and yeah. being our guest. It was super great to get to know you and know your market, uh, hear your experiences and your thought process. I appreciate you sharing that with our audience. Absolutely. Thanks for having me on, Shane. It was a pleasure. So guys, if you like this episode and want to get more, go to our YouTube channel. Go to Spotify, click on there, hit the bell. That way you'll get notified every time we upload another episode of the Real Estate Rundown. Keep you up to date on all these fine people that we're able to interview, this knowledge that we're trying to bring to you guys. And best of all, guys, let me know 
what you think. Send me a, a, a like, a, a remark. I'm on YouTube as well. I'm on all the social channels. You know where I'm at, guys. Thanks again for joining us on the Real Estate Rundown. We look forward to seeing you. Have a great day, guys. That's a wrap for today's episode of the Real Estate Rundown. Let these newfound strategies pave the way to start a successful career or a profound rebranding. If you loved everything you have heard, listen to more conversations at www.shannonrobnett.com. And be sure to leave a rating, share it with your friends, and subscribe. Until the next episode.